Okay guys, for this video we're going to be talking about respiratory burst. Now this pathway is important because deficiencies in enzymes involved in this pathway can result in different pathological outcomes. So before we talk about respiratory burst, it's important to know that neutrophils, whenever they have phagocytose products within them, they need a way to kill this product. So in order to kill this product, they have to use reactive oxygen species. So when you talk about the respiratory burst pathway, we're going to be breaking it up into two main pathways, which is going to be the activation path and the neutralization path. The activation path is going to be activating this reactive oxygen species from molecular oxygen, whereas the neutralization path is going to actually neutralize this, these reactive ox oxygen species so that they are not going to affect the cell itself, as these, we're going to learn, as these reactive oxygen species are quite damaging to the cell. So activation of the respiratory burn pathway pretty much is going to begin with molecular oxygen. It's going to use NADPH oxidase to form superoxide, which we're going to get back to this enzyme later. And then superoxide is going to be converted into hydrogen peroxide using superoxide dismutase. Hydrogen peroxide to HOCl or bleach is going to be converted via myeloperoxidase, which is also important. And then this HOCl bleach can then go on and kill those phagocytose products. So if we talk about the neutralization pathway in order to avoid this killing of products when the cell does not need to, it's going to involve catalase, which is a very important enzyme. And catalase uses actually glutathione in its reduced form in order to convert this H2O to H2O. So you really need to have a lot of this glutathione present in order to convert a lot of this, a lot of these free radicals into neutralized products. So glutathione is generated using NADPH from the HIP shine, which was then formed from glucose 6-phosphate. So as you can see, in order to really neutralize this product, we need to have different steps involved G6P and ADPH in order to form GS, GSG, which is a reduced glutathione form. So we're going to now look at how this really correlates clinically and how it's going to show up on the board exams. So the first enzyme we need to talk about is the most important one. It's going to be NADPH oxidase. Deficiency in this, exam, in this enzyme results in chronic granulomatose disease, also known as CGD. So this is, a, this, is, this is going to cause a problem because, as we can see, we cannot create this superoxide, which is important in order to kill these products that we don't want within the cell. So this really causes the most problem for organisms that are what, what, are, are, are what we call catalase-positive organisms, which mean that they have this enzyme catalase. You see, when organisms have this enzyme, then they're always going to be converting this H2O2 into H2O, therefore HOCl will never be able to get formed. So then if you're not going to have HOCl or O2- which are the two free radicals that are produced within this pathway, then, then you're going to have no way of really killing these phagocytose products. So then this can result in occurring in immunodeficiency because you cannot create any of these free radicals. However, it's not going to have a large tool on, on or, or, or organisms that are catalase negative because they are still able to convert H2O2 into HOCl. Not all of this being converted to H2O. So therefore you can have HOCl as a backup since the O2 minus, I mean since the superoxide is not present. So catalase negative organisms are not going to be affected as much with NADPH oxidase deficiency. Now also in the killing pathway or the activation pathway, you can also have a myeloperoxidase deficiency, and this deficiency will also result in a decrease in HOCl rather than a decrease in superoxide. Now the next thing we're going to get into is going to be relating to the neutralization pathway. As we can see, glutathione in this reduced form is absolutely needed in order to neutralize this free, this free radical. So when you have decreased levels of glutathione, that means you're going to have an increase in free radicals. So what we see in patients that overdose in, with acetaminophen is that since acetaminophen enters the body and is broken down, glutathione is used to neutralize these products. So as a result, with increased levels of, 
of acetaminophen, you're going to have a large drop in glutathione since that's being used to decrease the acetaminophen levels within the body. So as we can see, due to the large drop of glutathione, N-acetylcysteine is prescribed to patients that are going to be overdosing on Tylenol because N-acetylcysteine is actually a precursor for glutathione. So you want to have N-acetylcysteine prescribed in order to replenish these doors in order to help reduce and neutralize the increase in free radicals that have occurred as a result of the decrease in glutathione that previously occurred. Now this acetylcysteine drug is very important and it's great to know. And that pretty much sums up this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, thank you very much and good luck studying.